Yo, my peoples, what's up? Welcome back to Shelf Stories, the channel that tells tales from games, books, and life. And also welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop podcast. I'm your host, Jason. Thank you so, so much for stopping by for this latest uh, chat with friends game chat. And this is exactly why Shelf Stories was founded. I was founded on the principle of diversity and inclusion. It was founded on getting gamers together wherever people game. You know, uh, If anybody who's seen my previous content, you know I define gamer very, very widely. Uh, I try to pitch as wide a tent as possible. And this tent, <laughs> we are going to a whole new place, a whole new land. So uh, I actually found this resource from uh, Eric Lang and his uh, Twitter. So, uh, so shout out to Eric Lang. Uh, right now, there is a Kickstarter. Right now, as we speak, uh, I'm recording this on Sunday. We're going to release this on Wednesday uh, in August. So uh, we are, there's a Kickstarter. It's not for a game, but it's for a game convention. And it's for gaming in a part of the world that we all don't really know about a lot about. And so one of the organizers has agreed, and we just did it quick. It's like, what? You want to come on my show? We're going to do it. <laughs> Uh, so this is a man we've been getting to know each other before the channel, and I can't wait to get to know him more. Uh, I'm not. I'm going to try to my my best uh, for the proper pronunciation. Uh, but this man, his name is Olufemi. Uh, o, wait, Oluwafemi Olusonia. How did I do? Not too bad. <laughs> okay, that's uh, that's uh, right. Uh, <laughs> uh, head us your real. Head us with your full name, please. Oluwafemi Olusonia. Olua Femi Olusonia, but Femi for short. Is that correct? Yeah, Femi is good. Femi is good. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Nice to be here. All right. So we are going to uh, promote a Kickstarter. We, we are, we're we just, you know, full sell on. Uh, please look at this project. See if it's worth your time and energy and focus. Uh, so we're going to do two things, actually. We're going to focus on the Kickstarter, but we're also going to bleed into talking about, um, you know, the Nigerian gaming scene. Uh, my friend is coming from Abuja, Lagos. Uh, actually, um, Abuja, Nigeria, which is about an hour flight away from Lagos. Uh, uh, Lagos, right? I'm learning all sorts of things today in terms of how to pronounce stuff, uh, which is uh, exactly what I like to do. Uh, why yeah. not? This is how we workshop stuff. Um, so uh, there's a gaming scene there, and this is not the first convention that they've held. So uh, we are raising funds for a convention. And I'm going to let my friend Femi talk all about the, the project that they're raising funds for. Go for it. Awesome. Thank you, Jason. Um, so we're raising funds currently for the fifth edition of APCON, the African Board Game Convention, held here in Abuja, Nigeria. Uh, APCON started in 2016 and wasn't held last year because of the pandemic. So we are seeking, we are seeing um, an avenue where we come back strong, um, bringing board games to the general populace here in Africa. So that's the general goal of Apcon, bringing everyone that is interested, enthusiasts, designers, publishers, developers, just think about anything gaming, event planners, and what have we. So the, and the plan is to bring everyone together to have a full-blown experience of what, tabletop in the, what the tabletop industry is and what it can be here in Africa. So the African Essen, the African Gen Con, uh, yes. right? Is that, what, is that the idea? Yes. And so how many folks, uh, so you've run this for five straight years, or not five straight years, but five years, and then a break yes. for the last year. How many folks who do you attend? What do you talk about in terms of numbers? Um, in terms of number, up till now, it's been in smaller scales of about 500. You have people coming and going, but you have like an average of 300, 500 persons. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I want to believe that over the years, this has scaled up. Of course, the first one, the second one, kept getting better. And I think there has been a massive boost between post the lockdown here in Nigeria and this period. Mm. Um, but I still spoke um, recently about how the cafe has experienced. You have periods where, oh, there are quite a number of groups coming in. Is When is this one leaving so that others have space and all that? So it just shows a lot of people have gotten really interested in gaming. A lot of people come in and they are wild. Uh, wow, we never knew anything like this exists. And uh, it's always amazing to get to, get to talk to them about wow. uh, what happens and, and all that. So it's it's awesome. That's fine. So then uh, for me, 500, I mean, we're talking about the very earliest like origins and the, or the very earliest cons here. Like you got to start somewhere. 
You know, yes. you can't just start with like, you know, 50,000 or whatever it is, but we're starting somewhere. <laughs> and um, so give us a sense for who, you know, you mentioned before designers, publishers. I mean, are they local to uh, where you are? Are you pulling them from different areas in Africa or probably perhaps international? Uh, are, are it, and demographic, I mean, are we talking about, you know, older folks, young folks, families? Uh, tell us a little bit more about who attends. Yeah, um, um, so far, I've kind of catered for folks from every uh, variety of region that you can think of. So previous editions, I've seen older folks, young folks coming together, even children, the children's competition has held previously. So it's, you see families coming, so it's like a conglomeration of every, anybody, as long as you're interested, that's all we need. That's the goal. You that's need, and you're always welcome. And invite. That's it. No and gates. Invite. No, we're not throwing up gates over here. But nah, it doesn't nah. matter. <laughs> Every, everyone, everyone, everybody. Can you play Twilight Struggle or you can't come? No, we're not doing that. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, so, and so uh, they come and then, you know, is it, you know, is it because what we see in America is like tables and then there's games set up and you kind of like, you know, look at the, and then there's booths. So like, you know, one table set up and then one booth set up where the merchants are showing their wares. And, you know, show, is that is that uh, am I close? In terms of what we'll see, yes, at ADP. you are you are close. You are close. Right. Yeah. So there are gaming tables. There are um, booths where you get to learn about games, coming upcoming games, and all that. And there are gaming tables for and there are competitions, people playing games. They are showcasing whatever they have to do that relates to game. And we just we seek to see that on a bigger scale. Um, see, um, showcase to everyone that oh, you're welcome to do this. Sure. If you have any interest, you are always welcome to do something about it. So yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and what kinds of games? Uh, are they games that are local to your area or are they, are they the games that we would be familiar with? So I imagine, you know, your pandemics and your ticket to rides and your Catans and stuff. So I, tell us about what people are playing out there. Okay. Um, that's where the, the scene here is a bit unique. Sure. So um, we try to showcase as many local games as possible so that yes you realize that oh it's possible for me to go through this process and actually come out with a product that will be awesome and beautiful for people to play but also we are showcasing that oh, these are things that have been done in probably more advanced areas of gaming and all that you can see these games you can play nigerian games and you enjoy the whole um variety of games together so be dexterity you have nigerian dexterity there are some really awesome games um, i have a favorite block industry that a lot of people play. And whenever they see games, in I think maybe two years, three years back, 90% would be like, oh, Monopoly Scrabble. But now um, right. there's that culture building and you can actually see someone say, yo, I saw, I saw this game, Block Industry, I played this, or I saw this card game, Hot Alive, or I saw, or we went to a party and we played this game, Instant Words. So it's nice to see people come in and, they already have like, oh, I saw this game somewhere. Uh, is there, there's actually a thing about it that is on, as big as this. So um, it's increased over the years and we hope to keep showcasing as many games as possible, be it local, be it international, just all the possibilities on the table. So then you mentioned before, uh, you've mentioned a couple of times, block industry, right? And I, I saw love, it. In, I love block industry. And you saw, and I saw it on the website, it's not a game we're familiar with. So uh, as an example of a, is, is that a Nigerian game? Yes, it's a Nigerian dexterity game. Dexterity game. And what are you doing in yes. block industry? Uh, in block industries, you have different color of blocks and you're supposed to stack them according to a pattern. So it's a two to four player game. So the players are seated around the table and on each card, um, there are four different patterns at each edge. So when you flip the card, you're faced with one particular pattern from wherever you are. And you're supposed to build according to that pattern. So if you have a green, red, blue, this thing, and you have um, block, and you have them set, and the card gives you a pattern to place them, immediately you're done, you take your hands off and you call block industry. So the first person to quickly get that set up, it's a fast-paced game. Um, okay, I so it's it. real time. It yeah. Is, yes, yeah, okay. it's real time, just doing that, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's, that's basically, the, so there are points on the cards and, the, per, the player with the highest points at the end of the game gets wins the game, and that's native to Nigeria. That is that is one hundred percent authentic, grown up from the ground. That type of game, yes. And yes. so, 
you mentioned before about a couple of years ago, like, you know, it was Monopoly and Scrabble uh, and that those types of games, which believe me, I got them right down there. <laughs> my my yeah, family plays uh, them too. It's, it's yes, yeah, definitely. you have to have those. Uh, yeah. I mean, and a lot of uh, patrimony for that type of game. Uh, what was the impetus? If you, if you remember that, if you, if that was, if you were involved, uh, what was the impetus for like this, the development, you know, uh, where, where did, you know, Nigerian gaming hear, quote unquote, hear about, or did it just grow up organically uh, in terms of the more quote unquote advanced, uh, you know, game beyond Monopoly and game beyond Scrabble? How did that happen? Um, well, I think it's beautiful to see because for the fact that I am the one talking, um, I got into gaming properly, the industry and getting acquainted with both the international scene and how it's developing here in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Uh, about a year ago, um, I worked, I was doing a design project that had to do with tabletop games for a thesis um, kind of design project. And I was trying to craft a curriculum that helped young kids learn with games and have fun and all that. And I've always played games. I had a few foreign friends. I played Catan a while, years ago. Okay. But I still never knew that there was actually a huge industry that called fourth for game. So I played the usual, um, you know, Scrabble, Monopoly that I could lay my hands on. And I think that's where the issue of accessibility comes in because a lot of these games, bringing them into here, the country is not as easy as it will be in certain places. So um, at that point, I needed um, a library of games and to bring them here was really expensive. So I kept looking and looking, oh, where can I get this game? Oh, I get this game from one person. I needed to compare. I need to do some research on the games and all that. Then that was how I met Casey. Casey is the founder and creative director at Nipcat Games. Right. So um, I, I, I discovered, oh, there are 300 plus games. He gave, told me the whole story of how it was crowdfunded some years back and how they've been growing over the years. And for the fact that I'm here um, a year later, immersed and well absorbed in the game. I think it's a testimony to how developed the industry is. And I, at least almost every time we talk, we get to share things that have happened from the past, things that um, ha happened probably passively that I did not recognize, oh, this was the board game industry as well. Because m myself being, being knowledgeable about Catan is not... It is still a bit unique here because right. very few people know about Qatar. Mm -hmm. So the majority is Monopoly, Scrabble, and what? What is a common um, take that game here in Nigeria? Very common. Almost every household while we're growing up had it. Had, so, had what? what was the game they had? What? What? W-H-O-T. What? Okay. It's a game that has shapes and numbers. Yeah, so it's a very popular game here in Nigeria. Wow. So, uh, okay. so yeah. would it be like your type, your Uno type thing? Like a, a like a take uh, that a small game or yes, it's a take that very easy game. Most every and mm -hmm. I can say confidently that most kids played it. So we played from our early. It's very simple, yeah. My dream, and uh, this is a little bit of a sidebar, but my dream is to take all these little cultural games and have them displayed at once so everybody knows. You know, so like if you're from South India, you play Karam. Uh, and if you play, you know, the, all these little um, like a, the Cambodian games and Russian games, like every every culture has a game. Where, oh, I know that one. And it's not it doesn't have to be Monopoly and Scrabble. Everybody, everybody has that. I want to make that yes. con. Uh, that'll be that's one of the things that I want to make that I want to share because I want I really want to get the message out. Everybody games, everybody. And and this is this is an example. Um, you know, it's not like Nigeria yeah, discovered everybody. gaming. This is it's just an effort of like taking a thing that everybody does and giving them more options and inviting them into like a, another circle. Yes. That's kind of how I see it. Absolutely. Yes, Great. definitely. Great. Uh, that, so then, so you were a is. gamer. You kind of you were already primed just from exposure yes. along the way. Okay. Uh, 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 yes, and immediately I had access to the game. I just threw myself in it and that luckily right. enough i was working with something that had to do with games so i think between august and now i've played close to 250 games mm. so i have been immersed in the game in the gaming uh, in in that way and it's been fun bringing friends together let's go let's go to the cafe let's hang out let's play games and last last year december i set up a games outfit to central games publish and promote games on every sphere. So um, the, 
uh, I get a bit carried away once I get talking about games. So I, I am absolutely just talking about games generally, and absolutely. I am yeah. definitely sharp. I can see the Probably I can see the joy. Left the major topic a bit. <laughs> That's yeah. okay. No, no, it's but, it, it's because we're getting to know gaming. Like, and I think you know because yeah, we're so, talking about pe- getting people excited, uh, right? Getting people excited to yes. back this, and you know, this isn't just yes. like one. Like, we're not backing yeah. uh, a forum. You know, we're not backing a, a, a boardroom full of people yeah. that have like graphs and charts and like like a strategy to dip, spread out gaming. Yeah. This is from the ground up. These are geeks just like us that decided, you know what? I have a happy thing. I want to share this happy thing. You know, doing those exactly. to me, that's the most human thing in the world. And so, encouraging yes. my listeners to, uh, you know, because this is going to be on podcast form and in a video form, encouraging anybody out there, if you are a person who wants to help people share beautiful things and help people share our hobby, this is it. Like, this is where the rubber hits the road because they, this isn't like an implemented strategy from a, a, a bigger firm. You know, this is a bunch of folks who just got excited about this. And is this is totally, this is about as grassroots as it gets, it sounds like, anyway. Yeah. Great. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, so it all uh, comes back to the Kickstarter, my friend. It all comes. This is how we sell it. We yes. got to say we got to make those human connections. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Um, so right now, I, I want to say the stage at which we are is one in which we're trying to get everyone included in in gaming. So it's really accessible. Um, a lot of people come and they're like, oh, you run this way and all that with the pandemic and all that, the fact that prices did not skyrocket or whatever as relates to gaming here, because access to the to the cafe is still a bit uh, $2 and you can play as many games throughout the day. What's so the, what's the currency? Uh, uh, you, you know what? It's, uh, it's, it's a thousand naira and that's about converted, that's about $2. Okay. So the conversion isn't crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. So uh, you can come around, you can play games throughout and with just that. And once a lot of people that are involved, many times you just come, you hang out and you, nobody's stressing you to pay. They, um, it's all on the bedrock of inclusion. So as much as what gets this place running, we also want you guys to keep coming. So just come, just come. A lot of times discounts here and they just, okay, a group is coming, just come. Well, we just pay this amount and have fun just to power lighting and all that to make sure they have it. Nice time playing game. And uh, it's important to see that everyone that has come has found a game to love. And someone go, oh, I don't like this game, seems a bit complex, this one, but they always find a sweet spot. And it's even there on the, in the cafe here. Everyone has a game. Same thing, um, a few months back, I opened a mini cafe too in Kaduna. Kaduna is um, about a two hour train ride from Abuja. It's more to the north, northern Nigeria, but it shares boundary with Abuja here. So I took some games there and I realized they already had a, a, a bit of party games. So they were playing games. They just needed more options. And I took more I took more games to them. And oh, oh this is I would like to try this out. I would like to try this out. And over I left today a month ago. I set up a mini cafe for people that just want to hang out, you want to play games with your friends, just come around. Someone will open the door, you play, you have, have access to games and you play and all that. And months after I leave, so I was like, oh, are you bringing more games for us? I said, sure, I'm, I'm open to bringing them whenever you want. So um, we are looking at helping this mini gaming com- in, in niche that are coming up. We are looking at promoting it at every sector. So mm-hmm. in Nasarawa, Nasarawa is another state to the north. You have people coming around for game and choose. They hang out in outdoor and indoor areas. They play different games. As much as possible, we get the games we can to them. Um, you have people in Oyo, Western, a bit closer to Lagos. That should be about an hour driving from Lagos. Um, you have cafes being set up there. You have a lot of events organizers infusing games into their events. So you say, like, oh, what games do you think we're going to have fun with here? And we say, okay, have this game, have this game. You, um, this, this is a game for a group. You will probably enjoy this game with 40 people. Or you say, oh, you're 20, you enjoy this. So um, I, I think that's one thing that excites me about um, being a part of it. Uh, I, I won't say I've taught a lot of games to a lot of people and I never just get tired. I, I might as well be hungry and I'll get to it. And so it's interesting to see the, uh, these people are excited to learn about it and I'm excited to teach. So it's like, oh, we already have a community. It's that easy. You want games, 
I love games. Let's get together and enjoy games. Absolutely. So we just um Appcon, uh, let me let me go back to Appcon. We can go back to Appcon is important. Yes, Appcon mm-hmm. is important because it brings this together on an even larger scale. Right. So if if you you know you've you've those small niches that have been formed and now come together and say, Oh, you love games, I oh, you, you love games, so can now let's come together and enjoy games and see what mm-hmm. Um, this can become a, as a national and on and on the continent. So um, we are at the stage of bringing people together, and that's that's the very basis of Appcon inclusion for all. Everyone coming together, enjoying games. Um, no stereotypes, no division. We just want to enjoy games. That's Appcon. Let's um, see some Nigerian games. Let's see some examples okay. right there. Let's take advantage of the fact that we have some video. Yes, awesome. Right. So um, this is a strategy game, the Battle of Adrika. Um, it's a game design and the story. You, hold, is, you can hold it up a little bit. So right okay. so it's covering your yeah, it's cover your face yeah. for a little bit. There you go. Okay. Yeah. So and, uh, the Battle of Ajita who am I looking at? What are the what are the people there? Are those like uh, soldiers? Yes. So you have soldiers and you have like a cannon, you have a mountain, and you have some resources here, um, from gold to um to oil. And you have cocoa. These are all things we're used to here in Nigeria. So, Very local. Um, uh, a Nigerian yes. person can look at that and go, that's me. You know, yes, I, yes. yeah. You know, I, I know me. that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And and right on the back, there's a mini, there's a very brief description about it. So it's um the game is has a an, hist- an actual historical background of the Berlin conference of uh okay, the year is not here, but I think that should be in 1886. So there was the Berlin conference where um, Western powers basically came together to like split off the resources here in Africa. So in this game, um, people are basically battling for resources. So they take on different roles. Um, you have four, you have four cards and it has to, you roll dice, uh, you make movement, you take actions. So the dice dictate certain actions. So you have the cannon, you have mountain. So the mountain basically defends against cannon then you have you have the pistol and you have the vest, the bulletproof vest. Those are basically the four. I, I put, let me just open this real quick. It's fantastic. So you, have, you have really fun components that most Nigerians have not seen probably before. Then mm-hmm. so all these games bring the components to it. You have an eight-sided dice, and you have the four for each for each player. Mm-hmm. Then you have certain objectives. You have micro mini um major objectives, and you have the minor objectives, and this this is an example of a major objective. Mm-hmm. So um, all these are uh, these are basically lands that are being fought for. Right. Okay. So, so like controlling those lands, finding you know exactly. con- moving your little guys and uh, and or girls, yeah. so, <laughs> your your figures. Yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. so, Yes. So oh. whenever you, if you probably get, if you have this as a major objective, then you are seeking to control this land. And if right. you do, you get an extra point for it. Yeah. So, and these are the extras. You just set them up and put yep. your, mm-hmm. and put them, and they have, they all have up, points control on them. Some area. Yeah. We're all familiar. We're very familiar with yes. that. Very cool. Awesome. And then there's the, there's the, there's the action part. So just at the beginning of the round, you decide what action you want to take. You don't shoot a cannon, you don't shoot pistol. You need to load. That's when you roll the die to this to like fill up your inventory. Mm-hmm. Cool. So it's it's a it's a very neat, um, straightforward game that and that's a, quite a lot here. And that's a local publisher, right? So yes, you know, yes. so how, I mean, I I don't know if you know a sense of like volume, like how many copies of games are made or how they're made. Are they are they made in are they made in Nigeria? Are they made in China and shipped over there? How does that all work? They are all made in Nigeria. Everything is made, made local, Nigeria. and you can just print, you know, like a made, couple of hundred yes. print run, and like, okay, here you go. Yeah, exactly. Very nice. So you get to, and these are oh, this this is not even open, but these are card games. Um, so since Nigerians who already play a lot of party games, so why not give them more party games and easily step them to other games, sure, introduce sure. them to new games and all that. So this. This um this is instant words and they be, they basically work with same mechanics. So for instant words, it's more like a it's similar to a trivia, but not a trivia because um it's a rush for the cards. Yeah. So um people that have already had a lot of um experience playing party games, they usually just oh I want to try that again. It's mm-hmm. it's 
I'm used to that. I say, okay, try that. And they come back and say, okay, I enjoyed that. I want another. And that that's basically how it has grown so far because mm -hmm. community has always been the way. So, uh, okay. There's a challenge version for the instant words that dictates, um, for example, on the card, there will be a compulsory letter. So if, for example, I'm saying an animal, before then I would have announced that the letter is M. So when I announce, I'm expecting a monkey or something that starts with M. So that's just for the challenge version. So then, do you, does Nigeria have solitaire games? Solitaire games, yes. Uh, we have solitaire games, I, I people. This is exciting. Yes. You don't have one, so, you don't have one on hand, but you have I some. don't have one on hand, yes. So there's a game, Hot Alive. It's an elimination solitaire game. So they are all ranks of cards. You have the A's, you have one, two, three, two, ten. Then you have S, H, and E. And basically in that order. So S is kind of like 11, H, 12, E, 13. So it's, it's a very, it's a, it's an elimination game uh, played by three to six players. So you just, you have certain cards in hand and you put some, one, they're called your hand cards and your beat. So you place the other cards face down. So if you get it, you split the deck of cards evenly, every player gets. So if you have six players, every player gets till everyone has even cards. Then you split the cards in twos. So you have some cards in hand and you have some on the table. Mm -hmm. And basically, um, a higher card of same color takes a lower card of same color. It's that's it. So that's the it's called a complete attack. So when simple, the yeah. number of higher takes a a lower one. Do then, you have game for only one player? Like a, a an only one player game? A one player game. Uh, Not so much? Okay. We have Homia. Coincidentally, a lot of kids play Homia. A lot of kids. Homia is a family building game. One to four players. Wonderful. Um, okay. it, it teaches pattern, pattern recognition, basically. So you have... Uh, okay. So you have a, a card that dictates how a family should be built. And those cards have certain color patterns on them. Then you shuffle, they're all in X, like X tiles. You shuffle them all and keep them face down. And your aim is to build a family. Mm -hmm. So in much more in higher player games or two to four players, the aim is to be the first person to complete a family. But in when you are playing one player, you, you're just trying to build as many as possible without flipping too many cards because on your turn in a when you need it you take it and build your family and if you don't you just cover it up and mark wherever it was in case you eventually need it okay so when for solo players you, you just teach kids and say oh you you do this you do this and you see them having first i finished my family i flipped nine cards i built a family a family consists of six cards the family card that dictates and five members of the family so you, you just have kids having fun or nice. sometimes you can have two kids sitting and they are not playing against each other they are just trying to mm -hmm. build a family on their own so it's, it's a really fun game um no other solo game is coming to mind but that not there's not too i mean i guess like it's it i, I don't know like they, i'm coming at it from a very uh, different uh mind frame so in an in american scene it took us a while to get solitaire to be accepted by people so, you know, like they, you would say, okay, you know, games are for families, right? The family, most games are family games. And the solitaire game was like, eh, go ahead and play a video game. And when the pandemic hit, then it's like, everybody's like, oh, I'm stuck at home. It's like, okay, I, I want to play a game on my own. So I don't, th does the Nigerian gaming scene kind of have that stigma about it? Or was it just, is it so, you know, like, how does that play out in terms of, you know, playing games on your own? <laughs> not the total ability, but to an extent, we have the influence on shaping how people view games. So right. when, they, when they come to you and you play a lot of games and you approve of them just playing a certain type of games they enjoy, if, oh, I'm a gamer, he plays this complex game, but I play this and we play together and we have fun. So um, it might not always be easy, but we have to try as much as possible to enforce that. You liking social games and someone liking heavy strategy games, it's a preference. It has nothing to do with um, a gamer or this person just plays casual game. 
So the, the so community is not so the community is so new over there. They don't have those preconceptions. They don't have like, well, this is the type of game and that's the type of game. Yeah. Like it's a, it's a very not uh, it's almost like walking back, you know, because we've been, you know, we have all the games and it's like we have all our ideas. There, it's like okay, well, whoever has it, it's a it's a real opportunity to be like okay, just everything. That's cool. Yes, exactly. So when, once I'm around folks, since I've I've had the opportunity to play a lot of games when they're not available. I just, okay, what do you enjoy? What will you enjoy? I'm, I'm, I'm big on experience. Absolutely. So I, that's how we've tried so far because you have a lot of people going, as, oh, I'm coming with my other group of friends. I just came here for the first time, but I have to come here with some of my other friends. I need to introduce them to this. So it's possible because they enjoy the experience. And sure. that's, that's what we're about. So AppCon, we still spoke about it today. Um, AppCon is key about the setup the attendance and the experience. Experience caps it all. So we want to make sure people have an awesome time that even after app, they're like, oh, where can I enjoy this in smaller circles mm -hmm. and now come again in, in, in a big zone, sure. so yeah. So let's let, we can get back to the Kickstarter. So we've painted, a, a, a hopefully we've painted for people yeah. a significant picture like in terms of numbers, in terms of what you're doing. Uh, and, you know, this is a, a legacy thing. You know, they've been, not, this is not their first rodeo. So uh, even though Femi hasn't been on the entire time, it's it's coming into a bunch of people who are who have experience. So this is happening, people, and the Kickstarter is funded. Yeah. So and and your guys are knocking yes. off these stretch goals uh, along the way. And I, as we're recording this, we're still working on getting a stretch goal, getting Eric Lang there to make a presentation and get people involved and everything. And it's not that far away, so we can get you know uh, you know our some of our like you know creme de la creme game designers out there to, to build excitement and uh, and all these things. Um, you know, there's there's a vision. That's that's really what I want to get to. So, like, in terms of the, of the relationship of the Kickstarter to the vision of what ABCon could be, you know, how do you feel like you're making progress towards that ultimate vision? Um, I think we're making significant progress, and the support has only enhanced that so far. Because um, having the opportunity to even host the basic, these are things we would have one way or the other found way to infuse in small in little quantities, but the Kickstarter just enabled us to do, oh yeah, we can do it full blown. We're having a convention, we're inviting people, have come come with your games. You don't have to come to someone's, um, you don't have to go to a certain company or meet someone outside. This is a gaming, it's, everyone is here. Just come here, bring it. Everybody has the opportunity to play your game, test it. You get feedback, um, you, opportunities come in conventions and we hope to be able to create this sort of things. Um, we get to bring children, come have fun. You're little, you, you see the other this thing you have, you enjoy playing together and you, that's how, I believe that's how culture is built and that's how community eventually become um, strengthened. Then from there, um, the pandemic was a um, big hit on a lot of cafes because um, there, there's the passion and there's the business. And a lot of times for us, it's more of the passion that is driving us. So while we want to stay viable and get things working, I was like, okay, just come. Oh, oh, well, we can always do this. We can always make adjustments to make sure that the passion keeps getting driven. So yes, um, a lot of cafes, if, it's, if we're just to think about just the business side, a lot of them will probably um, increase entry fee or something that keeps them, but because, just find a way to balance. Okay, I design games, I sell games. How can I balance and make sure people can still come in and have this experience? So um, this uh, Appcon is uh, a signal to the possibilities and potentials here. So it's giving us like a boost um, and it's important because a lot of times it, it can, you can get a bit where you're like, ah, this, is this getting stressful? But um, the passion keeps you going and it's amazing to see people interested in seeing interested in seeing that what you're doing is amazing and they want to see it going on. So um, if we're going to compare, there are certain stats that immediately pop up, you have, okay, yes, we are moving. We are not where we were. Um, because as at 2016, there were barely about two published Nigerian games. And there was just the Nipkaz Cafe. Nipkaz was basically the first and he has done an awesome lot in helping a lot of other people get this going. Uh, including me, yes. So um, there was just the Nipkaz Cafe um, and he had, there was a whole load on him because he had to design, he had to churn out games, publish games for the Nigerian um, environment. He had to promote through the cafe. He had to sponsor a lot of things to make sure, oh, 
this is interesting. Come join me. Have an amazing yes. time. Yes. Um, and all this as are beginning to bear fruit. I, I dare say so because um, I've come in and I've been a part of it and I have to say what he did so far alone for that period of time has been amazing. So coming from where there is just one publisher, um, a few, maybe three Nigerian games, basically no content creator. If you went online, you probably see nothing about mm -hmm. people playing games and all that. Um, there, there were no designers and all that. Um, but between now, I'm, I mean, I'm at the cafe a lot, so I get to see people coming around. It manufactures the game. It manufactures the games I design. It manufactures for different designers. So having the, having designers pop up and say, oh, I have an idea. What do you think about it? I say, oh, work on it. We'll, we'll always help as much as possible. From there, um, I think to the best, at least to my knowledge, there might be more. I know close to uh, at least 10 designers now and there are probably more. And they are interested, they are, it's exciting that they bring out games and they are played and people have fun. I, I think that's a lot of fulfillment for a designer. And you have publishers, you have Central Games, that's my publishing outlet, which has published our six games so far, three prototypes, nice. amazing prototypes just dropped, and that takes it to nine. Um, you have um, the Forerunner games, designed and published about three games. Um, we have Best Man Games that have the official license for Monopoly here in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And they, they also um, designed a Bible game sometime soon. Um, there's a free, I think a designer that just published a, a Bible game, I think. Bible Guru, very fun Bible game that has trivia and has charades parts and all that. Um, just a lot of things are coming up and it's good to see that we're growing. Content, um, if you go online now, you probably see a video for... I, there, there's a show play with Femi on YouTube where I just get some of my friends around. Come around, let's play games and we record. So when you go online, you get to... Oh, this is the block industry Femi talked about. This is the home year he talked about. Um, there's a fun, game, a, a fun game of focus we play, Concentration. It's a very nice game. I should probably tell you how it works now because you will probably enjoy it. So yeah. it's a game where... Um, you can play with as many as possible. Close to 20 people can play the game. So um, there are active cards that tell you a particular category. So on my turn, I just say concentration, concentration, and everybody replies concentration to tell me their list name. And I call the category on the card twice. So if, for example, I said um, names of flowers, names of flowers, immediately I call it twice, I start. So I say I probably go rules, and the next person keeps calling. So it's there's a tempo to it. You go rose, lily, hibiscus, sunflower, till someone breaks the flu or does, has nothing to say and the person gets the card. It's a very amazing game and gets crazy a lot of times. I think it's a YouTube <laughs> channel. So there, there are just a lot of games, a lot of games. And we have a feel of what has been created locally. And thanks to a, a lot of supporting publishers from time to time send some of their copies of games. So we have certain games available and uh, so for for cafes you have nip cards now you have central games cafe in kaduna you have the um foreigners cafe in ibadan you have yes there's, there's a an educational cafe here in abuja to lend them entertainment so it's mostly for kids for a dollar you just go there with your kids you play game introduce kids to game nice. take kids to school and all that um we have we have outreaches to school like trying to set. I have one that I, I go on on Fridays. I take games to them. Thanks to Nipcast for giving me some games to add to mine. Yeah. I take yeah. I take to the school at no cost. Kids just come and play game. I teach some of their teachers. Teach them how to play this. Teach them to. Have, they have fun. Everybody enjoys games. I'm like, oh, that's amazing, and, and that basically fulfills my Friday. I have fun doing it with them. I get back. So I, I, I just need to state consistently that the growth has been amazing. And we believe that Apcon signals another phase of, of growth. Yes, I would Absolutely. love to hear that. Yeah, I mean, I think that we've talked a lot about the Nigerian gaming scene. It's young, it's growing. There's uh, in, is 
there's localized publishers that are making games for the Nigerian market. Well, we're and you know, it's very, you know, um, at an early stage in terms of like what it plays. So like I'm hearing a lot of you know party games and you know pattern recognition that kind of thing and as it develops it will get you know its katans and it's like maybe even you know heavier and heavier than that as it kind oh, of develops. I, I I want to say there are already certain games like that. We're already getting there. We're already there. Yeah, yes. Okay. Um. There, there's a game Village War. It's a strategy game. Um. Amazing game. Has to be one of my best strategy games. It's it's it's. Founded on actual folktale here in Nigeria, Igbo folktale from the southeast part. So you have five villages um, that split up and are in war, and they have ancestors trying to say, oh, this is not supposed to be happening. You need sacrifices. These are concepts that are very relatable to Nigerians. So when you tell when a Nigerian sits down and you say, okay, um, this is your village, this is your village, um, this is how the war goes on, this is their attack. Everybody knows that. Um, Everybody knows. Every, easy to add. And it's 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 I won't say it's an impressive game. Very amazing. It launched at Spiel last year, the Spiel Digital. So it launched officially then. Mm -hmm. And it's it's an amazing game. So there are, there are of course, games of varying um, difficulties, I want to say. And it's important. So when someone wants to ease into playing all these games, it starts with whatever is comfortable with. Sure. But the, but the strategy is there. And yes, you know, and there. there's and there's more. It is and there's more coming. And like that's that's kind of how it happens, right? You know, you kind of yes. like I see like an, and like here in the Western world, they have this chart where it's like, okay, the average weight of a game just kind of goes up and up and up as people get more and more comfortable, you know, with this yeah. uh, with this kind of. So like that's happening in Nigeria as well. The yes. average weight yes. is kind of going up. It's and it's already exactly. kind of on a decent little trend line. Like people are playing yeah. Catan, people playing yes. these different things, and we need a Nigerian version of Catan. We need a yeah. we need, <laughs> you know we, all those games that that we enjoy. I'm sure that you know. I, you know, looking forward to localizing a lot of those very popular games, you know, for yeah. the Nigerian audience. So it's Definitely. happening. It's happening. Yes. And, and it's, and it's projects like AB con that will enable that because yes. you're taking all of the cafes, you're taking all of the little houses, you're taking all the schools, all the places where people play games. And it's like, here you go flyer, uh, yes. notification, uh, you know, uh, come on in. So then yes. when is the, when is the con actually going to happen? Um, um, due to, of course we have to do a bit of planning, but it's going to hold in December. December. Yes. Okay. How, how are the seasons down there? Is well, um, it goes here up and down, but mostly um, it's Hamatan in December. I'm not sure that's a very common season. So, uh, Hamatan, it's called, we call it Hamatan. So it's basically just, it's dry, it's hazy. Dry. Okay. And it's, it gets cold. Cold in early in the morning and gets really hot, hazy through the day most times. But uh, yeah. Okay, so that's the perfect time to play games when it's like when it's dry and, and cold. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Come on in, son. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So we're looking at December for uh, for the for the actual con to launch, and yes. you know where the project is funded, so we're going to get a con. Is now it's a question of how much, you know. And I think the vision is realized. Like it isn't just like a door is open. It's you know we have y'all have enough money to do what you want and make it look how you want, and you know and and welcome as many people as you want. Yes. Yes, exactly. All right. So, any final words about uh, ABCon or uh, Niger the Nigerian gaming scene in general? You're, you're, I know there's so much to say, but in terms of um, you know selling uh, selling the, the the project, right? In terms of like getting people excited for the project, is there anything that you anything else that we should talk about? Well, so far it's been amazing, and I strongly believe it's it gets better by the day. Um, when I was notified that Eric Lang. There's there's the opportunity of him to come as a stretch goal. I was I was blown. Sure. As I, I want to believe a designer on my uh, on my skill would definitely love to meet him. There, there's a lot to learn. Um there are a lot of opportunities that can open up for the industry as a whole with him coming. So uh, it's be amazing to hit that stretch goal and fingers crossed on that. Hopefully. That's the time. We got some time yeah. and we got some room for it and, and the trend lines are pretty good. So we can, I think we can make it happen. Yeah. And hopefully this, uh, this, this talk, you know, kind of get you there and, uh, you know, help you, helps you get there. Uh, that would yeah. be really cool. Awesome. I, you know, and for me, you know, on, on my channel, Shelf Stories, this is what it's all about. You know, I'm, I, I'm on the same tip as you are, where it's like, this, we have a happy hobby and as much as we can share this happy hobby to all little corners of the world, people who you don't even think of, People that's like, wow, you know, like, because I, re I truly believe that we all game. Like, we are homo ludens. We, everybody, yes. every single person is a, is a gamer on some yes. level. And we can, and if we can get people to sharing the, you know, the more involved stuff, you know, like, I love strategy games. 
you know like there's nothing wrong with getting people in their strategy games so like we're, we're, we're spreading the gospel over here that's great exactly um, okay so um femi uh how can people you know get in touch with you how can people get in touch with the project whether it's for ab con or for maybe they want to support uh you know some of the things that you or casey are doing uh what's an easy way to get in touch with you um okay i think it's easy twitter or email um my twitter is centred underscore games mm-hmm. or my personal ulua underscore femi i think it's pretty easy then there's Nipcard Games. Just search Google uh, Nipcard, Nipcard Games. games. It's going to pop up. Search mm-hmm. Central Games. It's going to pop up. So, yes. But for Instagram handles at Nipcard Games, or I think at KC Nipcard, but it should come out once you put Nipcard. I'm, I'm not sure of the exact handle for it is. But mine is at Centroid underscore Games and at Ulua underscore F E M small L. Mm-hmm. Femi was speaking how to use L. So, yes. All right. So, this has been Olua Femi, Olu Sonia. How did I do? Well, you went a bit downwards from. Uh, oh, <laughs> from no! <laughs> 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 so, yeah, uh, uh, it's, there's a bit of intonation. So it's it's Olua Femi, Olu Sonia. Olua Femi, Olua Femi, Olu Sonia. Oh, I know, I know, I know. I keep on, I keep on trying to put the little bit of an accent on it, of my own accent, anyway. Uh, Femi, yeah. <laughs> we'll just go with Femi. Yes, Femi. Thank you, thank you so much yeah. for stopping by the show, and I wish you the absolute best of luck. Thanks, Jason. It was amazing to be here. Thanks for your support. If you could change your mind, you can change the world, people. So until next time, later, everybody.